Atiku receives knock from Ebus. You know, gone are the days the Ebus were told to wait for their turn. We are tired of hearing it. We don't want to hear that anymore. So it is now or ever. It is Ibo's turn to be president of Nigeria, and that is the only option. So on this note, Ibo leader sees Atiku's comment, you know, his uh, latest comment, that is only after his tenure that Ibo would become president as an insult. They're also asking for apologies or apology. You know, the former vice president of Nigeria, Atiku, in a meeting in Enugu, hmm, a meeting attended by some Ibos and other Nigerians, he told Ibos he would give them a fair chance to lead the country after his tenure, only after his tenure as president. He said he did he did that um, in 2019 when he brought Peter Obi, and he did that in 2011 when he brought, I think, Ben Obi as his running mate. And um, he has now using he's now using a fan your call as his running mate uh despite our harnesses directive that no Igbo should contest on the pdp because pdp disappointed us so going by that he claimed he will give Igbo a chance i wonder why Igbo at that meeting did not stage a workout immediately anyway i know all of them are his friends they are there to do his biddings so, um, where is the trouble coming from now? As Atiku has is receiving backlash. Atiku's comment was a provocation. He's playing with a whole race, as if um, we have no wise ones among us. Just like the the person the other day, is saying Atiku will do one time and it's over. You people should spare us such trash. It's enough to beg Ibos to support you and not to start telling us stories. What happened to equity and federal character? And the idea that power should rotate between the north and south? Atiku will certainly seek re-election in 2027, if he has his way, this 2023. And that is that will mean Ibos will have to wait for 2031. If things are going the way they should go, South South has had a shot on the presidency. Southwest, Obasanjo, South South, Jonathan, it's Igbo's turn. But they are trying to tell us stories, cock and bull stories. It is Igbo or not. The arrangement was that all the political parties will field Igbo candidates so that at the end of the day, it must be an Igbo. But when it gets to the time, when it got to the time, they started sharing money, doing this and that. And this is why um, a lot of people are agitating. If Nigeria... Eh, eh, Okay, we're not compelling people, but at least for the sake of equity, fairness, and justice, Ibo should be allowed to have, you know, to become president of the country, but they wouldn't. Like I said, this is part of why a lot of people are agitating. Okay, let me read an article here. It said, since the return of democracy in 1999, the gentleman agreement was that power would be rotating between north and south in that order. The south got the first shot at the presidency with Chief Olusego of Basanjo, southwest. He's from the southwest. After him, the presidency went to the north, Umaru Yaradua. After Umaru Yaradua, uh, somehow he died in office and things went the way it went. Um, power now went to Jonathan is south south Anna. so it remains in the south a, a block called the southeast so dr good luck from the south south filled in the act um, you know he became the acting president and became the president 
So going forward, the presidency returned to the north with Buhari. Buhari is about to complete eight years. And he's rounding up his tenure, seven plus now. Therefore, based on that gentleman agreement, the presidency ought to go to the southeast, to the south again. And when you say, mention south again, southeast, southwest, south, um, north and south, north and south, it has come south several times. It went to southwest, south, south. It has gone to north almost, you know, every region. When it comes to south again, this time around, it's supposed to come to south. Now, southeast, but they wouldn't. So, they, out of the three geopolitical zones in the south, all of them have had a shot on presidency, except Igbos, the real drivers of Nigeria economy. If you look at things, Igbos are the true one. They are the ones acting that I am idea of one Nigeria. By their action, they are more one Nigeria than anybody. For the sake of fairness, though due to uh, the way things have been going in the country, the Igbos started talking about secession because they are not being treated fairly. They are being marginalized. They are not. Uh, uh, there is a kind of. Um, uh, you know, they are taking sides against the Igbos in this country. There's an arrangement that we cannot have it. So what do you expect? So, we have been expecting a Tidku rather than wanting to come um, become a candidate on the PDP, he should have supported Igbos if he's you know, he preaches fairness, equity, and this. He should, he, that is where he should have started. He should make, he, he, he should have said, let the eastern, um, southeast have it. Then afterwards, he become, it's normal to put it that way. Uh, let the um, southeast have it. Then it will now come to him. At least let's try, even if it's four years. Meanwhile, Ohaneze Ndibo Youth Council said Atiku cannot be trusted. And by the way, I don't think Atiku can achieve what he's saying because it is not in the president to dictate who comes after him. Although they will try, they will make some moves, but normally it, it doesn't mean it must happen that way. Abbasanjo finished. Uh, Jonathan finished. Jonathan could not even return office. Whatever happened, he was ousted. Okay, or oh, he completed his tenure and he went out. So how sure is Atiku that we are going to have it after him? Because we know this was the same thing APC party was saying. This was the same thing they were saying. They were telling us, oh, after, before, towards the end of the Buhari's tenure, he started... So how shall we? Nigeria should stop deceiving us. And this particular attitude met Ndibo, most Ndibo, throw their way behind Peter B, aside competence and aside uh, having seen his past record. This idea of that it should rotate met a lot of people. Meanwhile, Peter B's supporters are not just Igbos. I'm feeling that more of other ethnicity will vote P2B than Igbos because he has some stumbling blocks um, in the East. He has some bottlenecks like the IPOB people that are not interested in Nigeria election. So P2B may, might get more support from outsiders, non Igbos. And they're not voting him because he's Igbo or he's Igbo turn. No, they are voting him because of his past and his antecedents. But we are first. We, we, we are talking about um, for the sake of um, equity first. Then Peter B now is not going as an Igbo candidate. No, Peter B is not there to represent Igbo or for Igbos to have a shot. No, Peter B is going. Look at the 
um, level of following he's getting. He's going there now per competence. And, you know, among the those that are contesting, he's, for people, he's like the best. He looks to be the, um, the most promising. So, viewers, what do you think about this? Ebos have, um, hmm, they have hit on Atiku. Uh, <laughs> they have bashed him for, that, that comment is so insulting. Eh? Imagine, wait for me. What kind of insult? To a whole race, you're not talking about um, a whole tribe or ethnicity. And uh, you think we are fools? And we'll ask viewers to react to this. Add your comments. Bye-bye for now.